We're live at the Africa Technology Summit hosted by MEST right here at Intercontinental Hotel Lagos. And I'm your very own sensational C Classic bringing everything live, live to your doorstep. Join me on this one. Thank you so much for coming. It is a great pleasure for me to stand here. Uh, it's so good to see so many familiar faces and also very good to see many new. The first time I came to Africa was in 2007. And back then, startups, software startups, were very, very far, uh, very difficult to find. I found one company in Ghana that was called Soft Tribe. I think it had seven employees at the time. But except for that, there wasn't much else uh, to see. Since then, there has been a lot of growth. And today, we have a vibrant tech community in Nigeria, in South Africa, but also here in West Africa. And I personally think West Africa is emerging as one of the most vibrant ecosystem in tech here in Africa. It is still early days. The community has a lot to prove. There are lots of promise in tech, particularly in these days when Naira is down, oil price is down, there are all sorts of things uh, fighting against us. But there's a promise and hope in tech for creating wealth and jobs locally. But in order to get that going, we believe it's important that people speak together. And one of the things we have seen in Africa is that innovation happens a lot in pockets. So you have innovation happening in East, around Nairobi. You have a lot of innovation happening in South, in South Africa. And of course you have in your West. So the purpose of the African Technology Summit was to create an arena where people from all these innovation centers in Africa could meet. What do you think investors are looking out for? So they're looking for, for quality management obviously. Um, they want to see management that, that has vision, that, that uh, they feel they can trust and trust to execute. They're looking for product market fit. Um, they're looking for total addressable market. Uh, when you're outside of, when you're, when you're talking to investors or companies outside of Africa about coming in, um, one, a lot of them see Africa is one market, and it really isn't. You need to be able to break it down and, and talk about the different markets within Africa. Um, and, you know, at times there's a lot more similarity between the major cities in markets than there is between the city and, and, and the rural communities in, in, in these markets. So a lot of it's about changing perception, um, that there are real um, exciting growth opportunities and companies to invest in. Hi, my name is Sam. Um, I'd just like to invite my panelists, you know, to just join me up here. Um, we're going to be starting up with the, the first panel, which is comparing tech landscapes um, across Africa. And we've got a rich you know, wealth of diverse expertise and knowledge you know, in, 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 in form of my, pan my panelists to join us. So as soon as they take their seats, we just go through some introductions and we start. Look at Africa as a whole. People talk Pan-African and they just go Pan-African. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a nice thing to say. But is there really a Pan of African, if you allow me to say that? Is there an intersection of ideas, you know, tools, policies? Are we learning a lot or enough from each other? And if we're not, what are the, you know, what are the issues that are preventing that? Um, I would ask maybe first um, uh, James here. Yeah? Uh, no. Jason, sorry. <laughs> my bad, you know, to, to start off with, because you see, you know, across the multiple stakeholder levels, you know, from investors to corporate ventures to, you know, startups and so on, um, you see them across the markets that you manage. Do you think there is that collaboration and, you know, what can we do to improve that? To be honest, I think there's, there's, there is some that's starting to happen, but I think there's a lot of room to grow. Um, I, I think in particular, you know, starting with just more collaboration between East and West um, Africa. The, the West African scene, uh, tech scene has been around longer, is a little bit more further developed, but I think the East African tech scene is growing faster and catching up. 
um, and accelerating, and part of that is macroeconomic, part of that there's, there's a number of factors to it. Um, but I'd love to see a lot more collaboration, you know, one, with investors, two, um, one of the things that we are seeing, and, and you know, we just put out uh, an insight brief um, on tech in East Africa. Uh, really, you know, we talked to 30 innovators in, in the space from investors all the way through companies to look at the difference, you know, what's really happening in the East African market. And one of the things that we saw was, and, and I'd love you guys to, to chime in if you agree or disagree, but the West African tech scene, and in particular in Nigeria, the market is large enough that, that a lot of tech companies can start here and really focus for a long time here. Where if you're building a tech company in Kenya, you need to, from day one, have in your DNA thinking about expanding outside of Kenya, either regionally and owning the region of East Africa, or a lot of tech companies say, we're gonna, we're gonna launch and perfect in, in Kenya and then move to Nigeria. Um, so it's at the investor level and at the company level, I think there is a lot more room for collaboration. Thank you so much. Yes, please, uh, one, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, so, there are about half a dozen companies who are specializing in tours. Uh, these are things that are about connecting hubs or taking startups from one tech scene and aggressively helping them develop sales and investment partnerships in other markets. Most of those companies are less than two years old. Um, and I'll just give one example to talk about why they're being created. So in South Africa, uh, a company that raises its money mostly from corporates has built a tour company to bring South African entrepreneurs to uh, Nairobi, Ghana, and Nigeria. And the main driver behind why that was needed is because the South African economy wasn't doing so well uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, so what, at least from my perspective, what I'm seeing coming into East Africa is when the Nigerian economy and the South African economy are struggling, uh, people start to look outside. Uh, and then these two companies are taking advantage of that and saying, hey, we can actively network on your behalf and help you get introduced. And the startups themselves, they don't necessarily have the funds to pay for flights and make arrangements to come and meet businesses in other areas. Uh, so that's looking up from our perspective. There is the danger of, of you know, Africa is not a country. And there is a danger of looking at Africa as one you know, unit. These are massive economies. I mean, when you look at Lagos, for example, our addressable population, um, for example, of, 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 of Uber in, in, in Nigeria, is the same as the entire population of, of, um, of Paris. So, sorry, Lagos is, is the same as the population in, in, in Paris. So I think there is a world where we need to start to look at these economies and respect them as individual world-class economies. Do you think Africa is doing enough when it has to do with technological development. I mean, it's, it, it comes down to the definition of enough. Okay. Is a lot going on? Definitely, there is so much going on in all areas of the vertical, you know, from infrastructure development, right through to services be, that are being created, right through to, you know, the, the consumer level or the B2B interactions, right through to content. And the technology vertical is spurring so many other activities in the business space, whether it's, you know, creating more convenience for retailers or whether it's enabling businesses to make, you know, better connections and, and improving their value chains. So. The question in terms of is it doing enough is almost like Oliver Twist asking for more, right? Okay. There's a lot going on and I think people need to recognize that the uh, across the region is still working at a certain level of immaturity and that there's lots more to go on, there's lots more to happen, there's lots more that's going to happen. Yeah, I think we're doing a lot. Uh, well, if you compare us with the rest of the world, especially the developed parts of the world or uh, recently developed parts of the world like Asia, we might not be doing as much as we should. But uh, in the last 10 years, for example, you know, the growth and the transformation has been breathtaking. So, you know, I can't, you know, I can't really say, I can't really, I mean, take that away from you know the industry the performance of the industry i think we've done very very well 
in trying to cover up the gap. There's still lots of work to be done, lots of areas to be covered, but I think we're moving at a very good pace.